I got my light in finally. It works a lot better, but um, I wanted to go over a post, Mark's post. We have a we have a really 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 great team, and he put this together so that he could help explain things, so that y'all can get a better understanding of what's going on. When I show like the magnetosphere, magnetopause, you know things like that, some people are like, "What am I looking at?" This helps explain it. So. I'm going to read this right here. Okay. <clears throat> here we go. Okay. And now we got a strong magnetic disturbance in Earth's magnetic field, which did not come from the sun, solar wind. The barrage hit Earth's magnetosphere from below under the elliptic and caused major disruption as the electromagnetic particles interacted. And so when it looks like this, that's like a heavy disturbance, heavy magnetic disturbance. So we are still in our backside alignment part of the solar system with the approaching brown dwarf star and companions on the opposite side of the sun in relation to where Earth is in our orbital path. Here's a rough illustration. This is looking, uh, looking from above the elliptic. Now this is looking from below the elliptic. So you get a better understanding of the graphs, magnetosphere, etc. Okay. We are okay, what we are seeing here is a side view of Earth, not bird's eye. The sun is to the right of the image. So okay, this kind of shows where Earth is, where the magnetic disturbance is. And then you can also see where the sun is. The solar wind is a stream of energized charged particles, primary electrons and protons, flowing outward from the sun, plasma. The solar wind stream comes from the sun on the right, earth, okay, on the right. Earth is the ball in the center, and now the white side is day side, the black side is night side. The lines you see coming from the center of the Earth, top and bottom, are magnetic field lines from the North and South Poles. In front of Earth, the lines from top and bottom create a magnetic force field called the bow shock. The magnetosphere, or magnetosphere, that's Earth's protection from the charged particles coming from the solar wind from the sun. Remember that shows where the sun is. The bow shock, or bow shock. Some people say it differently, okay. The magnetic field lines behind Earth, the magnetopause and magnetotail, are disrupted due to electromagnetically charged particles hitting the magnetosphere from below. This is what scientists classes as normal versus disrupted. So normal versus severely compressed. So when we say, hey, this is being compressed, that's what that means, okay. And this is the new normal when it comes to disruption. Cosmic radiation, charged particles. Okay, so the solar. Okay, so hold on, let me look at this real fast. Our magnetosphere can be disrupted without it affecting the Schumann resonance. That's true. The only way the Schumann. Okay, that's a hard way. That's really a hard word for me to say. Schumann resonance. I always call it Earth's heartbeat, but the Schumann resonance can be affected. Okay, the only time the Schumann resonance can be affected is when we have high ionospheric charging. For the Schumann resonance is what is within our atmosphere. In this order. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me go back up real fast. So I wanted to say this. The uh, okay, when we have ionosphere charging, we usually tend to watch that, and that's how we're able to kind of see where the earthquakes are going to hit or when it's going to hit. So when we see a, a highly charged area. We call we call that we say okay hey this area might see a large earthquake. Um, it tends to charge the area and that tends to get a large earthquake. So that's how we do that with the ionosphere charging. It's like charged particles, radiation, core expansion. You have the crustal displacement. Then you have hold on. So we get that's when we get like the large cracks in Earth. So that's happening a lot. The, the inside of the Earth is heating and swelling and that's what we're seeing right now if you listen to the five waves of energy 
that kind of explain that in more detail. Okay, so. Um, then when we reach the magnetosphere class as outer space, and here is where we are, is where, what is being disrupted in these images. Earth's ionosphere is here. Earth's bow shock or bow shock can stop the less dense clouds of charged particles from reaching Earth's ionosphere, and if the energy waves are coming from below the elliptic, the particles are hitting the magnetotel magnetopause, which causes eddy, form eddy formations as the charged particles interact with the magnetic field. So that's an eddy formation. When we see those, that's what that's called. Okay. Um, okay, so here is an illustration of Earth's magnetosphere. Here is an illustration of how the second solar wind is hitting Earth's magnetotail magnetopause. Now this one's highly important. I like the way this one's done. This shows us where the sun's sitting, where the Earth's sitting, and under the sun to the south, under the elliptic, over here, is where the brown dwarf is. And it's throwing all the charged particles. Now the charged particles are also hitting the sun, so it's affecting the sun. You'll notice, you know, you notice it becoming brighter, hotter, in the summertime, sometimes you'll notice it stings the skin, if you will. But that is throwing all those charged particles and radiation at Earth. So when we see those, com like that, that model that I show a lot, when that's compressed, you can actually see the secondary radiation wind hitting and compressing. So that should show you where it's coming from and how that's happening, how we're seeing that. So, that's all I have on here for that. Now I'm going to give you the full link because he has so much on there. You have to go take a look at that. There's tons of information. He did a really great job on this. So, if you will, click the link below for him and go read that. And Here we go. I'm going to come up here to my posts. One. posts. It's a little different using the laptop. Laptop, laptop, okay. Um, so yesterday when I did a video on the, I guess it was the, the magnetic reversal um, and the poles that were shifting, I want to go over that real quick because I'm going to show you something else that was in that thing that Mark posted that will help you kind of see where we're at. So Real quick, real quick, let me, you know that would be my luck. My internet just went out right when I was doing this. I have the worst luck telling you. Okay, I'm back, I got it to work. But um, what I was gonna go over real fast is kind of the same thing I went over yesterday. But that way I can show you something afterwards, okay. So the pole shift, Earth's magnetic field is acting up and geologists don't know why. First off, they know exactly why the poles are shifting. So the erratic motion of North magnetic pole forces experts to update model that aids global navigation. navigation. Um, something strange is going on at the top of the world. Earth's North magnetic pole has been skittering away from Canada and towards Siberia, driven by liquid iron sloshing within the planet's core. The magnetic pole is moving so quickly that it has forced the world's geomagnetism experts into a rare move. The most recent version of this model came out in 2015 and was supposed to last till 2020. But the magnetic field is changing so rapidly that researchers have to fix the model now. The error is increasing all the time. The problem lies partly with the moving pole and partly with the other shifts deep within the planet. Liquid churning in Earth's core generates most of the magnetic field, which varies over time as the deep flows change. In 2018, the pole crossed the international dateline into the Eastern Hemisphere. It is currently making a beeline for Siberia. And here's that model. Magnetic motion. Okay, so in the meantime, scientists are working to understand why the magnetic field is changing so dramatically. We showed you why. That brown dwarf sitting where it's sitting in our backside alignment 
is tugging on the poles and pulling on us. We're doing kind of a wobble, like the Earth's axis tilt wobble that I talk about. And we are seeing like, when, when it gets to that certain point, we see a bunch of a wobble, 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 wobble back and forth. And so as it gets closer and closer, that wobble increases and becomes worse and worse and the poles are shifting worse and worse. So it just keeps going. As it gets closer, now wait, before I do anything, I really want to show you this. I want to show you that thing on Mars. Okay, let me go over here. Okay, so this right here, this is what he said. He said, this is how much the magnetic North Pole has moved. When we reach the 40 degree point, magnetic reversal is imminent. The closer the system gets, the more degrees we move. So expect this to begin to move faster than previous years. Stay vigilant. So you can see right here, this first arrow is pointing to, I think that's 2000. It says it over to the side right here, 2000, and there's an arrow. Now you, you see how much movement, just since 2000 alone, come all the way down here to 2018, that's how much movement we've had just since 2000. That's, that's a lot. And then you see that little yellow line right there? If you zoom in, I can give a, a zoomed in picture right here. But that little yellow line, that's, that's how far we have to go till we hit that 40 degree mark. That's not very far, especially given how much we've moved just since 2000 alone. That's, that's pretty close. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to zoom in more. Okay, right here. So that, that all goes hand in hand. That all goes together. That, I'm sorry about this chair. This chair is super loud. But, um, anyways, that all goes together and... The brown dwarf is the system, I call it the system, but the system, as it makes its approach and it gets closer and closer, that's also why we're seeing like cosmic radiation increasing. And we've seen a drastic increase in cosmic radiation. They're, they haven't even updated it in a while, and I, a lot of the time when they don't update it, they're, they're something to hide. Because a lot of the other things that go with it, there's a bunch of missing data. So... We're seeing all kinds of things go down, be broken, not working, and so it's harder to monitor. But we're doing the best we can with what we got, and we just want to keep y'all informed. Now, let me... I think that's all for right now. I'll get something better put together, but um, I will link that in the bottom, both those, and I want you to go take a look at it. It will help. But thank you. Have a nice day.